Let's go over some tips for drawing the human head. We aren't going to go into individual bones and muscles in the head. We'll hint at a few of them, um, but this is mostly going to be geometric, like how we talked about hands and feet. Okay, so don't rely on a formula when you're building a head, especially when you're doing a portrait because everybody's different, right? But we have to kind of learn what's typical. So when we look at someone or ourselves, we can say, okay, um, the distance between here and here isn't typical. It's a little uh, bit of a bigger distance or a smaller distance. And as long as you keep asking those questions, you're gonna get likeness. Okay, so let's look at the skull. Let's gesture a little bit. So, gesturing a little sphere for a cranium. Let's go a little bigger. Okay, and then I'm gesturing an oval for the face coming down from the cranium. Okay, so the main thing we're going to talk about is the structure that kind of guards the eyes, right? So it's important to leave enough room for our forehead, for a brain, right? So our eyes are gonna be kinda down in here. So we have a brow ridge, that's gonna be that top horizontal line. And this bottom ridge, it's gonna be our malar bone, okay? So it doesn't actually go through the nasal passage, obviously. But we're going to draw it like that just so it's an easy geometric way to find the structure. Okay, so our eyes are protected, our eyeballs, right, are protected behind this kind of football helmet. Okay, but our nasal passage would be kind of in the middle of those. Okay. Our temples coming up. Okay, so when you are drawing someone, you, somebody else, doesn't matter, um, question where the corners of their mouth line up with their eyes. Typically the center of the eye would line up with the corners of the mouth. It doesn't mean it's that way for everybody, but Ask that question when you're drawing someone, okay? It might be typical, it might be atypical. Okay, so another thing I want you to do, let's put a nose in here. So when you are drawing somebody, in illustration, in cartooning, it's typical that the tear duct and the like top of the nostril are like really far apart, but in reality, this distance isn't that long, right? It might be really short, a lot shorter than you think. Okay, so question the distance between that inner eye, that tear duct, and the top of like the hood of the nostril, okay? Don't exaggerate it, it'll look really cartoony. So another thing I would look out for, make sure you're not skipping equal distances, okay? So the distance between the nose and the mouth might not be the same distance between the mouth and the chin. So make sure you're not creating equal, equal distances because that's illustrative. That's what happens when you're drawing out of your imagination. Let's give him a jaw. Okay. Treat this area as a protrusion, right? It's not flat. There might even be some segueing into those cheekbones. Now the ears typically line up with the base of the nose and around the eyelid. That does not mean that that's where it automatically should be drawn. When you look at someone say, is this typical? Yes or no? Okay.
Okay, so make sure you're not skipping equal distances. Make sure you protect the sphere of these eyes behind that football helmet. Make sure you treat the eyes as spheres with eyelids wrapping around the sphere and not just flat almonds. Let's talk about drawing the head from a profile view. We're going to kind of gesture through the skull. This could be a foundation for your portrait. Okay, so let's draw it at the same angle that my skeleton is here. So I'm just going to gesture. It's not really a sphere, it's kind of like a hamburger bun, right? It's like a bun. I'm going to gesture that for the cranium. I'm just going to gesture an oval for where the face is. Okay. Now you should look at who you're drawing. It might be that the oval is a little more set back. Look at the diagonal. Is it diagonal? Is it vertical? Okay. It, is their jaw more tucked in than their forehead? Ask those kinds of questions when you're drawing somebody. So for this, let's make it kind of vertical. Okay. So we have our orbital bone, our cheekbone, going back into that zygomatic arch, right? Let's make that a little substantial. Okay, so we have our little nasal bone protruding, brow ridge, now I want you to treat that top jawbone, the, the maxilla, that's its name, as a protrusion, right? And then it'll go in to become that mandible, the lower jaw. Now, there is a little tiny bone right here. It's called the mastoid process, okay? So it'll become important when we talk about the muscles of the neck. Okay, so this little bump, I want you to include that. So our spine, the neck of our spine, is kind of gesturally going this way towards the middle, right? It's not hooked up to the very back. So this is a really simple gesture of a skull. You could start a portrait this way with vine or willow charcoal and just kind of fog it out and get your pencil and start contouring right on top. Right, I'm doing this in like 10 times the speed at which you should contour, right? But just know that this willow charcoal is so ghostly that you can use it as a base, right? I could erase it, it's really easy to erase, it's easy to move around. So you can capture the gesture of the internal information and then use contour to describe the superficial information. That's what I mean by drawing from the inside out. 